As of roughly three years ago, I stopped using AIOs, and it's for a couple reasons. One, their reliability is questionable. I've had them die in two years, I've had them die in three years, and while newer ones are supposedly better, that is, well, yet to be seen. Not to mention, AIOs are pretty much provided by the exact same company across the board. There's one company named Ace Attack that makes every single AIO except for like three. Which means that the exact same parts, the exact same everything, just a different coat of paint. And this is really concerning for only one reason and one reason only, there's no incentive for them to do better. So for as long as I've been doing custom loop liquid cooling, I've been thinking about the possibility of coming up with a way to make a DIY all-in-one liquid cooler. And I think with everything on the table today, we are gonna achieve it. So uh, let's roll the intro and I'm gonna introduce you to one of the coolest parts I've ever seen for custom loop liquid cooling. So uh, let's roll that intro. So before we open this box, let's actually kind of bring some context into this. A custom loop and an AIO actually run the exact same way when you strip away the convenience of an all-in-one. There needs to be a pump, reservoir, tubing, fittings, a radiator, fans, and coolant. Now, usually in a custom loop, all these parts are separated, except for usually the pump and reservoir, because they actually have the most temperamental relationship with each other. The reservoir has to always be somewhere above the pump, or the water level of the pump. And this is so that the pump can properly operate. That being said, anything outside of that, like flow indicators, temperature sensors, all that stuff is, well, extra, and isn't necessarily needed to actually run. An all-in-one liquid cooler has everything except for a reservoir, which it probably contributes to their lack of longevity. That being said, where all-in-one liquid coolers really excel is in space saving and convenience. Usually with the pump attached to the CPU block, the AIO will fit into a much smaller space and can easily be placed in an area where you don't necessarily have room for a whole tube reservoir to actually sit. But, there have been movements in the past to actually accommodate for a change in this. One of them was actually by a company named Barrow, who uh, we're actually gonna be looking at their product today as well. But uh, they actually made a CPU block that had a reservoir and a pump built onto it. And while it was good, there were a lot of reports of the pump actually not lasting very long. And more importantly, uh, there were some reports of it having interference with uh, fans that were right next to the CPU block or VRMs because of the size of the block. So it seemed like it was on the right track. And the worst part is it actually was pretty consistently out of stock, uh, which is the saddest part about that. AlphaCool also made one that was very similar, but it was also attached to one of their all-in-one liquid coolers. The reason that they were able to get around Ace Attack, the company that makes all the other ones, was because you could detach the tubes and make it into a custom loop. This is more or less custom from the get-go, and is technically an all-in-one unit, sort of. In fact, with what's in this box, all you really need is a CPU block and everything to connect it. I mean, everything on this table looks intimidating, but like, this is really everything, and this stuff's just for filling and cleanup purposes. This is really everything you're going to need here. Oh, and this, actually. So, as you can see, we've got some thermal compound. That's thermal paste, pretty straightforward. Some fittings, because we're going to need it. In this bin is some tubing. We actually, these are optional, um, and I'll explain why in a little bit. And a CPU block. And this is just the mounting hardware for that CPU block. And this is the EK Velocity uh, Brushed Nickel Edition, and these are EK Torx, and this is actually EK Clear. We also have EK Cryofuel Solid Green, because green is my favorite color, and I love my cryofuel. But realistically, that's all you need to add to this, which fittings and water block aside and optional fans roughly would come to around 200 ish dollars. And this right here, this big old thing comes to around 150. So 
Uh, I guess really enough beating around the bush. Why is this so special? What even is this? Well, instead of putting the pump in the CPU, Barrow put it in the radiator. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Oh, this is a unit. This, <laughs> this is a very interesting piece of tech here. We've got a reservoir built right into the radiator. We've got a pump built right into the radiator. Of course, a radiator and some fans. Now, the only reason that I am replacing the fans on here is not because they're bad fans or anything. No, it's a, uh, they use a proprietary connector that Barrow uses for their uh, fans specifically. And the fan controller itself was completely out of stock. So I had no option of just buying the fan controller, even though that would have saved me a lot of money because that was only $15. And our replacement fans are Cooler Master Slick Flow 120 ARGB fans. Uh, a little overkill, but uh, they were actually a pretty good price. Now, that being said, this is actually a very, very special radiator because not only does it have a pump and reservoir built into it, but it has use outside of the actual process that we're doing today. If for some reason I decide that this D5 pump is not sufficient, I can replace it with a different D5 pump. And they also sell one with a screen on it that also looks pretty cool. Not only that, but if for some reason I wanted to disassemble this whole thing and just use this as a radiator, I could do that without having the pump here. There are actually terminal, terminal pieces on both ends of the radiator. And this means that if I wanted to, I could convert this using one of their many conversion kits to be a standard radiator. So overall, just so many cool things. And we're actually gonna have to take it apart slightly to get into the fans, I think. Now this external piece is CNC'd aluminum, if I'm not mistaken, with the internal piece being actually copper. And we actually have copper fins in here, which is an anomaly in itself as well. Oh, you can just kind of, oh, 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 okay. I don't have to disassemble this fully. All right, so you can just kind of take this piece off. All right, I was doing this the dumb way. This is why they have holes here. Makes sense. You can just take this off right here. This gives you access to the fans and then we just unscrew the fans. Might be wondering about thickness of this bad boy. Uh, it is about as thick as a standard size radiator, actually even a thin one really, with fans attached to it. So it should fit in most cases height wise. Uh, length wise, it will fit in pretty much any case that can also fit a two, 80. All right, and that just kind of slides right on out. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> it is exactly one foot. So now we've got our Slick Flow ARGB fans from Cooler Master. Okay, let's see what we got in here. Okay, that's our, our box of accessories and our fans. I may actually need to take off the side because this is a, uh, <laughs> the rubber on these is thicker than the rubber on the other one. But they will fit. Hey, we got it. <laughs> oh man. There we go. That is one heavy beast of a cooler. It's gonna sit like that. So now let's actually start making this thing into the all-in-one liquid cooler that it should be. We're gonna need a couple of fittings. These fittings are EK Torx and they have O-rings on them. And this is a bowl of distilled water. Now you're probably wondering what's the distilled water for? We're not filling it yet. Well, believe it or not, with fittings, you wanna actually wet the O-ring on the bottom here. Normally it would just take it off, but just a little dip right there should be fine. These O-rings were used recently, so they're not gonna be too bad. 
We just wanna get them nice and finger tight. Don't worry about torquing them down. This is our outlet, this is our inlet. So this is ready and this will be our fill right up here. So our fill and then we have a drain right there. So we can fill and drain it all from here. And actually we can even drain it from right there if we really wanted to. So overall, nicely set up. Sloop's incredibly simple, by the way. Like, I don't know if the last time I've ever had a loop with just four fittings. We're ready for tubing. Now, lengthwise, we wanna make it so that if this is sitting, let's say here, that we can get to about there. So now there's only one thing to do before we fill this because filling this will mean that we wanna make sure our rotary fittings are turning without turning the actual thing, which they are. Cool. Everything's torqued down, torqued down. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're actually in a good spot to start filling this thing. Okay, and it's together, filled up. And I love it already. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Now there's some air trapped in the system, but that's only gonna go away when we use it. So uh, I did it guys. I, I made my own AIO. Let's see if I can get it all in frame here. All that's left to really do is install it. So. Uh, It's done and it worked. It actually worked really well. There's only one problem with it and it's entirely my case choice, not the concept itself. The, the actual custom AIO, brilliant and it will work in most cases and you can make it in a 360 variant and it will still work. There were essentially a couple of hiccups. One, not having the RGB controller for the fans that were already installed. Two, the Cooler Master fans being larger than the other fans, or I guess their frame being a little bit thicker. Three, the case itself doesn't really like AIOs in that top spot. And Lee and Lee acknowledges this. They actually sell a, uh, a bracket for you to offset your radiator so that it can fit in there. I made my own to make it work, but there's a lot more tape holding my solution together than I would feel comfortable with in most situations. Not only that, but I added RGB fans everywhere and yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> While it is really, really cool and I have a whole video talking about this PC in detail about how it's actually powered by exactly one piece of RGB software, I kind of, it wasn't the easiest thing they put together. I had a lot of troubleshooting. It actually took me the entire week of just troubleshooting to get everything working properly. So while it came out really cool and I would do it again, I also would have planned more time as opposed to how much I actually did. Not to mention, I even have a video about my new workstation PC coming up as well, where things go significantly smoother than in this case. So. While I still do love the Lee and Lee Air Mini, I would probably avoid doing any kind of liquid cooling in it, even AIO liquid cooling. But the DIY AIO, that thing, that thing is amazing. And Barrow, I really like this product. You did a really good job setting this up. And I can imagine a crazy dual loop with like two 360s and like stacked on, oh, it'd be so cool. And it does seem like it works in both orientations. I, I just followed the instructions off of one of the pump blocks that already existed. So either way, 
It's a really cool product and it just works. This whole system just works. But that's where I'm gonna end today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave it a like, comment, subscribe. I do content like this all the time. In fact, actually, if you get subscribed now, in a little bit, we're gonna be doing a workstation build with multiple hard drives and a full custom loop in it. Yeah, this one's uh, kind of crazy. It can fit up to 15 drives in it. And uh, yeah, I, by the time we're done, it's gonna have about 20 terabytes. So it's very much a, um, a, a DIY workstation using all consumer parts. So it's actually really cool. I would get subscribed for that. Thank you guys again. Wolfie, 